On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including Elon says Starship will be ready for launch inside the month, while also hinting at a new version being designed, and NASA's next Mars mission is still being planned for the new Glenn. This is the Space Race. In the wake of the second Starship test flight, CEO Elon Musk has been answering a lot of questions from curious and excited SpaceX fans about the world's largest rocket, and recently, Elon let some interesting information out into the wild. SpaceX is close to leaving version 1 of Starship behind. On November 24th, Elon posted an image of four in-production Starships in the high bay at Starbase Boca Chica, ships 28, 29, 30, and 32, and mentioned that they are the very last of the V1 line. And, well, that certainly raises a very specific question, one that we weren't alone in asking. Hey Elon, if these are the last of the V1s, then what's the V2 going to be? Luckily, Elon was still in the mood to talk about the future, and so he explained a little more. In response to a user on X asking about the V2 Starship, Elon says that the next iteration of the vehicle's design will hold more propellant, reduce its dry mass, and improve its reliability. Okay, that's pretty vague, but there is something in there that Elon is likely hinting at specifically. Way back in 2021, Elon was having a conversation on Twitter about the potential of Starship upgrades as time went on, and more specifically, the subject of adding more engines came up. Musk remarked that the ship is begging for three more vacuum engines to be added, and that the tanks would stretch to make room for propellant. Now, this could have just been some idle conversation. Most concepts like this don't survive the first couple of draft meetings with the engineers, but adding three more Vacuum Raptor V2s under Starship would increase its payload lift capacity by roughly 50% taking it from being able to lift 150 tons into orbit to 220 tons. So that accounts for his more recent hints about increased propellant capacity and the reliability improvements will likely come from just the application of lessons learned through testing. But what about the bit about lowering the dry mass of Starship? Surely adding more propellant in bigger tanks and three more engines would do the opposite, no? Well, we're not going to pretend to know exactly what Musk is thinking here, but recent developments in metallurgy have been very successful at letting companies like Relativity Space and NASA work with lighter metals to make things like engine cowlings and fuselage structures. There's been no word on if SpaceX is intending on dabbling in some of this interesting new tech to get their weight down, or if they've found other ways to shave some mass off of their multi-story vehicle, but either way, they definitely need to consider trimming some weight off Starship if they intend to get some better lifting capacity off of it. Aside from the specifics though, the timing definitely lines up with SpaceX moving forwards with their design. These last four Starships should allow them to test deep into next year and give them time to construct more specific test vehicles for things like orbital refueling demonstrations and lunar landing attempts. With everything they are about to learn, it would almost be disappointing if they didn't make a better Starship. I wanted to share something really exciting with you. Lately, I've been completely hooked on the new Opera browser, and I can't wait to tell you why it's become such a game changer in my online life. Trust me, I think you'll fall in love with it too. One feature that's completely won me over is Tab Islands. It's like my own little paradise for organizing tabs by context. Seriously, it's been a clutter-busting revelation, and I no longer accidentally close tabs I need. Now, let's talk about the design. It's sleek and smooth, making every interaction a delight. The animations are so fluid, and the interface dynamically adapts as you open new tabs or add new features. It's like browsing in the future. But here's where Opera One really stands out. Aria, the integrated browser AI. Aria isn't your run-of-the-mill voice assistant, She's a legit genius. Arya can explain concepts, translate languages, brainstorm random ideas, summarize information, you name it. She's basically my trusty sidekick, saving me heaps of time with her smarts. And the convenience doesn't stop there. Opera One has an integrated player that puts Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, and more right at your fingertips. Plus, it's got Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and Telegram built directly into the browser, so no more slow texting on your phone, it's all right there. 
But wait, there's more. Opera One throws in a free VPN and ad blocker, ensuring you a smooth and secure browsing experience. So say goodbye to those annoying pop-ups and worries about your online privacy. I've been using Opera One for a few weeks now, and it's genuinely transformed my online experience. It's like having a personalized browsing companion right at your side. I'm including the download link below. You've got to give it a try and let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you've already taken it for a spin, I'm curious, what's your favorite Opera One feature? Three to four weeks. That is the latest word from SpaceX CEO Elon Musk as to when the company would be ready to launch another Starship Super Heavy rocket. In a response to questions on social media on November 19th, Musk indicated that his company was in very good shape following the second test flight of Starship just the day before on November 18th, saying, quote, Starship Flight 3 hardware should be ready to fly in three to four weeks. There are three ships in final production in the high bay. By now, of course, we are all well aware that Elon's timeframes are more like guidelines than actual rules, but here he's being very specific and with good reason because there's a huge difference between SpaceX having their hardware ready for launch and SpaceX having the authority to launch. Elon is 100% correct. A quick glance from the highway into Starbase Boca Chica shows that there are three nearly complete Starship vehicles in the main high bay. There's actually four in there, but one isn't quite complete yet, more on that later. We're also aware that the company has Booster 10 basically ready to fly, and just recently transported Booster 11 back from the secondary test range at the McGregor facility. So that's at least the next two flights, very close to being good to go, with a couple more waiting in the wings. SpaceX does still have to complete pressure and cryoproofing testing, as well as some static fires, before they can certify their next pair of launch candidates, but that would likely only take two weeks or so, provided no major hardware issues were found during those tests. The rest of the time Elon was estimating is likely for the minimal repairs to the orbital launch mount and part of the tower. If the November 18th test proved anything, it was that the recent upgrades to the SpaceX Stage 0 launch hardware were so effective that the company now has more expectations for the safety of their equipment than even NASA can boast. Elon shared photos of him standing under the OLM on the 19th, proudly showing that there was practically no damage to the thing, despite having the world's most powerful rocket boosting into it to achieve liftoff. By comparison, NASA's Artemis 1 launch left their SLS launch pad devastated. Anyone would agree that it's a major improvement from Starship's first test flight. So that means there won't be a whole lot of time needed to repair and test that launch hardware, which means we get to talk about everyone's favorite regulatory body, the FAA. Because whether or not SpaceX is ready to go by late December isn't the issue here. They still need launch approval from the FAA to plan another test flight. As soon as Booster 9 flipped and exploded, the FAA needed to start a mishap report, which means another investigation period. But there are silver linings here. First off, with so little damage to the pad, there won't be much for SpaceX to do in terms of satisfying any FAA requests for increased safety. The quick disconnect on the tower's chopstick arms might need replacing, and the OLM might need to replace some panels and get a new coat of paint, but that's about it. And since no new launch hardware is going to be installed, the environmental investigations that took so long last time won't have to be run again. Similarly, the biggest concern from the first test flight, the flight termination system not activating properly, wasn't an issue this time. Booster 9's system activated as the booster began breaking up according to SpaceX, and Ship 25's FTS was activated manually by the ground crew when they lost telemetry, again, according to their own report. There is a small issue with Starship's FTS though. It seems that a sizable chunk of the upper stage survived the explosion. The Starship nose cone and upper flaps continued on long enough to re-enter the atmosphere. Now, that's not a huge issue as the current regulation says that the FTS only needs to break up the volatile fuel containers, and most of the nose cone was not likely to survive the trip all the way to the ground. Regardless, those regulations were made before anything like Starship was conceived, and so the FAA might take this as a cue to ask SpaceX to design part of their FTS to be able to destroy even the hardened nose cone of their gigantic rocket. All that being said though, it may not be entirely ridiculous to think that SpaceX wants to take a run at a Christmas time launch. 
they have a lot of testing ground to cover if they want to actually make the deadline for their 2025 Artemis 3 mission, and while we here at the Space Race have said that it doesn't seem possible for them to make that date, we would love to be proven wrong, safely, of course. As for any upcoming third flight test for Starship, this new information really does shift the potential schedule up a bit. Last week we said it looked as though a test in January would be unlikely, with February being the most probable time for this next launch, and May being a safe bet. But with the new information that so much flight hardware is essentially ready to go, it seems impossible that SpaceX won't be granted a license to launch by January at the latest, and who knows? With all the pressure on the FAA lately, they might finish their investigation before the holiday break, and then we might see IFT-3 competing with the ULA's Vulcan for the most spectacular Christmas launch. A recent advisory council meeting at NASA has revealed that the agency is confident that their upcoming Mars escapade mission will be ready to launch by August 2024 at the earliest, and while they are not entirely confident of that launch date, they are confident that the mission will be shepherded to the red planet on top of Blue Origin's prototype heavy lift rocket, the New Glenn. Director Bradley Smith of NASA's Launch Services Office made the statement to the Human Exploration and Operations Committee on November 20th, remarking that he was incredibly excited for the launch, which, considering it's now possibly less than a year away, is a pretty good sign that NASA is confident it will launch within the year. But they can't really be sure of that because the contract holder is Blue Origin, the undisputed king of not disclosing information about their rockets. Back in February of 2023, Blue Origin was granted the contract to take two Rocket Lab-made satellites to Mars as part of a Venture Class or VADR launch contract. These contracts are used to let NASA get certain missions to the pad for cheap while accepting some additional risk, which is where the new Glenn comes in. Blue Origin has been working on their new workhorse rocket since around 2016, when the company unveiled their plans for their own reusable launch vehicle. Since then, the company has struggled to get it to the pad, with setbacks related to their BE-4 engines and, of course, the pandemic. But they didn't seem to have any trouble landing contracts. Despite not having much to show the public, New Glenn started landing Blue Origin several military and government contracts, which leads us to the Escapade mission. The Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers are a pair of small sats made by Rocket Lab, the company behind the Electron and the Photon upper stage vehicle that was responsible for getting NASA's capstone satellite to the moon back in summer 2022. These two satellites will head to a Martian orbit and study its magnetosphere for interactions with solar winds, allowing us to better understand how Mars's thin atmosphere behaves in solar weather. This mission represents a huge opportunity for both companies, but it's really down to Blue Origin to get their rocket working on time. It's hard to say anything about their progress because, as we mentioned before, they are very tight-lipped about their tech. But whenever they've pushed back initial launch tests before, they've never made NASA excited, so it's a decent bet that New Glenn will be flying in 2024, at least for the first flight test. As for Escapade, we'll just have to wait and see if the quiet work of the Blue Origin engineers holds up to testing.